Hello, this is Steve Dilley on behalf of Federal Tax Workshops, speaking to you about COVID-19, the 90-day tax postponements. This presentation was updated 325.20. I'd like to thank RIA Checkpoint for materials included in this presentation, as well as thank the IRS for their prompt response to this crisis. How all this comes together in this presentation is my doing as the author. And remember, this is an educational presentation. You should also do your own independent research before advising clients. The presentation covers the postponement of some tax payments as well as tax returns due to the COVID-19 emergency. I think there are three possible responses to these various pronouncements and the approaches on the following slides lay out those responses. The first of those is ignore either partially or fully the postponement options. The second is post postpone the return and any payments. And the third is file the return and postpone the payments. Let's talk about the first of these, partially or completely ignoring the postponement options. This can happen quite frequently because the taxpayer may not have a calendar year end, so no tax return or estimated payment was due on April 15, 2020, this taxpayer is not eligible for any postponement. Also, before anything was known about these postponement possibilities, the return or extension and any first quarter estimate were, refi were filed. No refund. Or the taxpayer has a refund for the return due April 15th, but the return has to be filed to claim that refund. Therefore, the return could be filed, but perhaps the first quarter estimate could be postponed. Or the return could be filed and any refund could be applied against that first quarter estimate. In the second approach, no return is sent in. This applies to income tax returns due April 15, 2020, and then they are filed no later than July 15, 2020. This should only be done for return showing tax due. Tax due with the return is postponed, and any first quarter estimated payment is also postponed. We don't need to file any extension requests to get this done. Then when July 15 arrives, and we still want to postpone the return, we have to file a regular extension along with any 2019 tax due and the first quarter estimate if that was postponed. In other words, either tax return season is moved to the, to the summer or tax season just goes on and on and on through the summer. The third approach is the file the return but don't accompany it, accompany it with any payment approach. Here, the income tax return is due April 15, 2020, is filed normally, but the payments are made no later than July 15, 2020. This should only be done for returns showing tax due. Tax due with the return is postponed, and any first quarter estimated payment is also postponed. No extension request needs to be filed. Again, if a further extension is desired when July 15 is about to arrive, a regular extension request can be sent in along with the 2019 tax due and the first quarter estimate if that was postponed. A few comments on each of these three approaches. In approach one, we ignored the postponement options. This may be the most common result for many practitioners since most of the work had already been done and returns and payments had already been submitted by the time the postponements became available. Even if the postponements are available, it might be better for clients' peace of mind to simply get it over with. What about refunds? The IRS has assured taxpayers that refunds are being processed in the normal manner and taxpayers should not be fearful about the government holding their money. So there does not seem to be any reason to delay returns claiming a refund. Under approach number two, we postpone the return. <clears throat> this approach is very helpful for taxpayers who are struggling to make ends meet during the crisis 
and were already waiting until the last minute to file and pay. However, preparers may still have to do a pro forma return to make sure there is no refund due and to determine the second quarter estimate, if any. For example, Bill as a single taxpayer is self-employed and underpaid his 2019 estimates. A 2019 return has been prepared for Bill, which shows a $20,000 tax due and a $13,000 first quarter estimate. The return and the payment can be postponed. Problem is, how is Bill going to be any more able to pay in July? And under approach number three, we postpone the, the payment, but not the return. This approach is also very helpful for taxpayers who are struggling to make ends meet during the crisis, and we're already waiting until the last minute to file and pay. Here again, however, preparers may still have to do a pro forma return to make sure there is no refund due and to determine the second quarter estimate, if any. So why not file the return? Again, Bill is our single taxpayer self-employed with underpaid 2019 estimates. A 2019 return has been prepared which, for Bill, which again shows a $20,000 tax due and a $13,000 first quarter estimate. Now the returns can be filed, but if desired, the payment can be postponed. But again, how is Bill going to pay for any of this when July does arrive? Let's start with the 90-day return postponement. The president announced a tax return postponement on March 20th, 2020, and the IRS followed up with details on March 21st, 2020, when they issued Notice 2020-18. This superseded a notice issued a few days earlier, which was Notice 2020-17. Also on March 25th, 2020, the IRS issued 24 Q&As that help explain the content of both notices. Those Q&As have been incorporated into this presentation. The 90-day postponement is for federal income tax returns due April 15th, 2020. And these returns are due from any person, which can be any taxpayer that is eligible for the postponement. The federal income tax return filing due date is automatically extended from April 15, 2020 to July 15, 2020. Taxpayers can also defer, defer federal tax payments, which include income and self-employment tax payments, due on April 15 to, to July 15, with no penalties and in interest and regardless of the amount owned. We'll talk more about the payment postponement shortly. Again, I'll emphasize regardless of the amount owed. The postponement applies to all taxpayers, including individuals, trusts and estates, corporations, non-corporate tax filers like partnerships, and those who pay self-employment tax. No forms needed until July 15th. Taxpayers do not need to file any additional forms or call the IRS to qualify for this automatic federal tax filing and payment relief. Individual taxpayers who then need even more time after July 15th have to file the Form 40, 4868 extension, but that'll have to include any payments that were deferred. Business taxpayers generally file Form 7004 to get their extension, and that has to be accompanied by payment. A lot of forms are postponed, and here is a list of them. <clears throat> I'm not going to read them all off, off to you, but they can contain all the various income tax returns. But remember, these have to be returns with an April 15th due date. For instance, a 990T might be a fiscal year return because many nonprofits that file that are on a fiscal year. So only a 990T, which has an April 15th due date, is the one postponed. Then there are forms that are not postponed, and these are ones that don't deal with income tax, such as estate and gift tax returns, excise tax returns, returns having to do with the beat tax for large corporations, payroll tax returns, and various other information returns. 
What if a form has been filed, but a scheduled payment due April 15th has not yet been made? Is this payment automatically rescheduled to July 15th? The answer is no. The payment will not be automatically rescheduled to July 15th. If nothing is done, the payment will be made on the date chosen. But the IRS has provided information on how to cancel and reschedule the payment. If the scheduled payment was through IRS Direct Pay, use the confirmation number from the payment to access the Look Up a Payment feature. The payment can be modified or canceled until two business days before the payment date. The email notification received when the payment was scheduled contains that confirmation number. If the payment was scheduled through the Electronic Federal Tax Payment System, click on Payments through that system on its home page, log in, then click Cancel a Tax Payment from the left menu and follow the instructions. Do this at least two business days before the scheduled payment date. Next, if the payment was scheduled as part of filing the tax return, authorizing an electronic funds withdrawal, for instance, it may be revoked, canceled, by contacting the U.S. Federal Treasury financial agent at the number shown. Call them no later than 11.59 p.m. two business days prior to the scheduled payment date. And finally, if the payment was scheduled by credit card or debit card, contact the card processor to cancel the card payment. What about those state income tax returns? Well, many states have postponed either the return filing and or the payment. This is a fast changing topic, so consult your state tax authorities for further information. The IRS does not have a place on its webpage to track what the states are doing. However, Bloomberg Tax and Accounting has a state tax coronavirus roadmap, and I've given, a U, given you a URL for that. Uh, you may or may not be able to access it depending on whether you subscribe or not. Now let's turn to integrating the return postponement notice with the payment postponement notice. Here on March 13, 2020, the, IR, the president announced the tax payment postponement, but details didn't emerge until March 18, 2020, when the IRS issued notice 202017, Relief for Taxpayers Affected by Ongoing Coronavirus Disease 2019 Pandemic. As I've already mentioned, this notice was superseded by Notice 202018, postponing the filing of the return. So this earlier postponement was for, for federal income tax payments due April 15, 2020, and this announcement has a little more detail in it than the later one. Again, these are payments that are due from any person. Any taxpayer can be eligible for the postponement. What taxpayers are eligible? Taxpayers have to be affected taxpayers to be eligible for the postponement. But the President's emergency declaration instructed the Secretary of the Treasury to provide relief from tax deadlines to Americans who have been adversely affected by the COVID-19 emergency, which it turns out is everybody. So the notices simply assume all taxpayers are potentially affected by the emergency, so the notices do not create any special determinations of harm to the taxpayer. What payments are we talking about? Any federal income tax payments due April 15, 2020, which could include calendar year C corporations with a return due April 15. That would be the tax due with the return or extension of the return, plus the estimated payment due on that date. Individual returns due April 15th, again the tax due with the return or extension, plus the estimated payment due on that date. And trust or estate income tax returns due April 15th, again the tax due with the return or extension, plus the estimated payment due on that date. All of those would have been due, but are now postponed. And there is a small chance you might have a calendar year S corporation where the return was due March 15th, but the uh, estimated payment for unrealized built-in gains tax would have been due April 15th, and that could be postponed. What about those 2019 IRA and other qualified retirement plan contributions 
that are due by April 15, 2020. While the Q&As issued March 25th by the IRA clarify this one. Those IRA contributions are postponed along with any MSA and Archer MSA contributions. Any 10% penalty for early withdrawals is also postponed. But excess contributions that were made to the, during 2019 to retirement plans still must be withdrawn by 415 to avoid penalty. <clears throat> so remember, these have to be payments that were due April 15th to be postponed. What about these postponed payments due? Although 90 days from April 15th is July 14th, 2020, the notices say the due date for the postponed returns and or payments is actually July 15th, 2020. Again, there is no interest or penalties due for the time the returns or payments are postponed. What about other payments? Again, only payments due April 15th are postponed, not other payments, such as, for instance, a June 15th, 2020 individual estimated payment. The Q&As just issued by the IRS make that crystal clear. And, of course, payroll tax payments are not postponed. But there are other provisions in the tax legislation that may postpone some of those. Let's do a few examples I've worked up to illustrate some of these concepts. Felipe's single taxpayer return was going to be extended because of some delayed K-1s. On April 10, 2020, a Form 1040 extension would have been filed. Without the postponement, a payment of $5,000 would have accompanied the extension and a first quarter estimated payment of $12,000 would have been made. Now, the return may or may not be filed but no payment need be made either way, and the first quarter payment can be postponed. But on June 15, 2020, that second quarter estimate of 12000 is still due and payable. Then on July 15, 2020, payments of 5000 and 12000 are due, along with any postponed return, or if no return, an extension of that return using Form 4868. There are some important exceptions. The postponement does not include income tax payments made with return or return extensions already filed. No refunds, except for those cases we talked about earlier where the payment was scheduled but could be drawn back. So this would include most of the returns we've already done, filed the return, and sent in the money. This could include individual returns, S-corporation returns, C-corporation returns, and trust and estate income tax returns. Now, interestingly, notice 2017, which came out first, put a $10 million limit on the C-corporation payment that could be postponed and a $1 million limit on other returns for their postponed payment. So those were pretty serious caps that would make delaying payment not available to some huge national corporations. Then notice 2020-18 came out, and without much being said about it, it supersedes notice 2020-17 and did not have these limitations. So there is no limit on the postponement amount. Again, a few examples. On March 10, 2020, Graham's married filing separate return was filed along with a $2,000 payment. On April 10, 2020, a 3000 estimated tax payment could have been sent. It was not an automatic withdrawal. Grams cannot get a refund of the 2000 that's already been paid in, but could, if he desired, it's not mandatory, postpone the $3,000 estimated payment since that amount was due April 15th. Now let's do a couple C Corporation examples. Ribbon is a C corporation with a January 31st year end. Thus, its Form 1120 is due May 15th, 2020, and its first quarter estimated payment is also due that day. Ribbon does not qualify for any, any income tax return or payment postponement. And the Q&As the IRS issued make it clear that that's the case. Now, Bo is a C corporation with a calendar year end. Its Form 1120 is due April 15, 2020, 
and it has a tax due of $365,000. It also needs to make an $11 million estimated tax payment that day. Now it can postpone that $11,365,000 whether or not it postpones filing the return. I hope you've enjoyed this quick coverage of the 90-day return and filing postponements. I thank you very much for attending this presentation. This is Steve Dilley on behalf of Federal Tax Workshops.